Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. The bit you've all been waiting for. Um, I'm not bothering with the microphone today because um, I'm just here. I'm not wandering off into the corners with my back to you. So this this has always worked okay in the past. Um, this is the big reveal. So we start with the thank yous. Anybody that was involved in any shape or form to do with my birthday vouchers at Burnham's, big, big thank you. <laughs> when Sarah added it all up, she said, um, do you want to sit down <laughs> before I tell you? <laughs> uh, yes, we did make a, a huge hole in it and we have the, the little bit on the end left over for another time. Um, yeah, there were some items that would be difficult to get elsewhere. Right, I said I was stocking up on stuff. I got some of that, which is a bug killer, um, that does include scale insect on the label, but it's ready made. I know I've, I've got stacks of bug killer concentrate that's systemic, but every time I want to use it, I have to mix some up and it has to be used fresh. So I've either got to use it all or throw some away, which is a bit wasteful. That's just for spot treatment. Literally, if I just see a few scale coming back on a plant, I can get at them with that. And Arthur says it works. So that's that. Can't chuck all this stuff down there. I, don't know. Um, I needed charcoal. And I had a good look at Sarah's charcoal. And whichever way you hold the bag, you see charcoal. Which implies it's not full of dust. I've got a bag of charcoal, not a bag of dust. So we stocked up on that. I've got three of those, and quite honestly, that bag holds more than what I bought online, <coughs> is not dust, and was cheaper. So sometimes you sort of think you go to the nurseries, you're going to pay through the nose. It's not always true. So that's a good supply of charcoal now, that will last me forever. I needed some cork bark. Over the years, the larger parts have been like cut in half and, and various things. And the last two that I did, which was the um, Oncidium type that I split, uh, Miltonia, sorry, um, those both went on large pieces of bark and that was my last large piece cut in half. So all I've got left now is small pieces. So uh, I had a look at Sarah's bark bin <laughs> and in it were two huge pieces including a round, you know, and, and it was like, you know, three, four foot tall. Um, <coughs> and I said, have you got any more cork bark because uh, your bin's a bit low. And she said, if you go through the private area, there's a door up the back. If you go through there, you might find some. <laughs> there was a heap. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> so I sorted through and got, got myself a few bits that I liked. Um, again, when I look at a piece of cork bark, I don't look at it as a piece. I look at it as what it will become. And that could easily become six pieces. Cut down through there. Cut down through there. And then all of them in half. Which would make a piece about so big. Yeah? Six pieces for one. So that's one. Oh, I don't know places to put stuff. Um, that was a nice piece. Full of bits, that one. Um, that will probably be taken into two. There's a natural fissure down through there and it will come apart very easily there, probably without hardly any sawing as well. Um, so that would give me, again, two pieces and then it would give me two big pieces, should I need bigger pieces. So that was that one. And then what got me thinking about the bark was this piece was in the back area where all the um, boxing up for mail order and stuff is. And this piece was just sat on the bench. And I said, is that on the bench for a reason? And Sarah looked over and said, well, if it is, I can't think why. <laughs> and I said, well, can I have that then? And she said, yes, you can have that piece. And I liked this piece a lot. Um, there's lots of individual pieces here. Um, lots. And then and a good piece there. And another piece there. That's lots of pieces. 
and she said you do have to be aware that we sell the bark by weight so whatever pieces you choose I will just stand them on the scales and then it's so much a kilo so uh, that was the expensive item the cork bark <laughs> just not the That's still okay, isn't it? <laughs> so I knocked the leg of the tripod, so that uh, didn't do us a lot of good, did it? And in addition to that, oh, we got some more bark. Now this brand is called Melcourt, which has a good reputation as being a quality bark. Um, a lot of people prefer that to the Orchiata bark. Um, that weighs a lot. To get that posted would cost an awful lot of money, I'm sure. So obviously it's the sort of thing you collect while you're there. Um, now this is the medium grade. They didn't have any of the coarse grade left. Well, they did, but Arthur said you'd be better off not taking it because he said it arrived wet and we bagged it up separately in smaller bags and inside the bags it's, you can see the condensation. It's still wet even though we tried to dry it out which means it will probably have some mould on it down the line. So he said, you know, that we're not too happy about that going out the door. So he opened a, a big sack of the medium stuff, fresh. So that was a sealed sack and it is dry inside and shoveled some out for me. So we got bark, we got cork bark, we got the charcoal, we got a bug spray. So that's supplies. Now we get on to the bit you've all been waiting for. What plants did I manage to escape with? I got some plants from the sales area. Um, <laughs> the video I did of the sales area, the plants I have got weren't in it because I'd already taken them out. <laughs> I'm afraid when I'm at a nursery that's open to the public, if I see something I want, I go straight to it and pick it up and take it away so that somebody else can't pick it up. <laughs> so that's that. There's some biggies in here as well. So uh, we'll see if we can get them all out. Right, this is a biggie. I'll have to pick this up later. Um, this is just a intergeneric, but it looks very much like one of the. Um, the big cat ones. Um, they're on Costelli's, I believe, and there's things like Cheetah, Bobcat, um, but they've got big cat names. And this one I particularly liked, and in theory, it's a direct replacement for one I lost a couple of years ago. Because it's, to me, in my memory, it's identical. And what's special about this one is not the really deep colour that the camera's going to pale this, I know it is. And boy, is this too wet. <laughs> I'll see if I can get it close enough. What's special about this is the little gold tips to the petals, if you can see that. Yeah? Each petal has got a little tiny gold tip on it. And I'm sure this is one I had before, and it was called Bobcat. I may try and find it. But, um, <laughs> duh. <laughs> well, that was a good guess, wasn't it? You know, I never noticed that. It was buried right down in. I could just see the tip sticking out. So it is Bobcat. And it's part of the Wildcat range, one of the named ones. So that is, is a direct replacement, an absolute replacement for one I lost a while ago. And I didn't like losing that one. It was one of the one of the ones I liked. And the other one I got from that area, another biggie, along the same lines, but um, this one stood out when I walked in the door. The, just the colour caught my eye. It's not as good a plant. That bobcat is a pretty good plant. It's a three bulb plant, progressively getting bigger. Um, but this one, it was the colour that got me. And from a long way off I spotted that red. And it isn't just red, it's red and fire orange. The colour is absolutely stunning. But this isn't such a good plant, unfortunately. This is only two bulbs and um, no sign of any new growths or anything. 
but the latest bulb did have another spike at some point, so capable of two spikes, which is good. But um, yeah, the colour on this is, uh, is pretty good stuff. It's a deep red with like a fiery orange lip. Um, I like that a lot. And that one, this has got one as well. I've got a feeling that's a trade name. It just says Oncidium. I'll show you. That may well be a trade name rather than a, a true name. If it's a true name, a true registered hybrid, then that should appear on orchid roots, orchidea, whatever. But yeah, I spotted that lovely red from a long way off. Um, it's in the cocoa peat, but as you can see, the top, the top of the pot does show healthy roots. Um, and unlike the bobcat that I've just put down, that one isn't soaking wet. <laughs> I think the bobcat hasn't long been watered. So that's those two. What else we got? We've got another big one here, and I can't remember what that is. Yes, I can. Um, this was one that um, came out of the growing area, and boy did I have to dig around to find this. Um, the dendrobium area in the growing area is a mess. Sarah openly admits it's a ripe mess. There's lots of plants in there that are unsellable. Um, we need to have a really good clear up and a tidy up, but they haven't got round to it yet. But as soon as I saw the section that this one lived in, I thought, oh, they're not very good plants. And then slightly to the back and to the side, I could see green, nice healthy green sticking up. And I thought, well, if that is one of these, if I can get the flipping thing out, I'll have it. And I did manage to get it out. Um, we didn't knock too many plants over getting it out and we did stand them back up again and that took longer than getting the plant out standing them back up again but a while back I got <coughs> the dendrobium formosum or is it formosi uh, formosum which is a black hair type with the really large white blooms with the gold lip and I've now got another one in the set. That's in Fundy Bullum. Very similar, yeah. Again, a black hair type. And the difference with this one, with all the others in there, they had at least one leafless cane, if not two. And this one's got three leaved canes, and the latest cane is incredibly strong. And I would say that's this year's growth. So we have three good strong canes, all capable of blooming. This one has already bloomed. So that one's had blooms and down the side here. They don't only bloom from the cane tip. And even the smaller cane has bloomed. This one hasn't. So this will be the next one to go. Probably next year now. Because again, that shouldn't get too cold. Um, it's classed as intermediate, but they shouldn't get cold. So that's that one, that came out of the growing area, public type. And then, uh, this one was quite a surprise because this was actually, I filmed this in the private area and I was surprised that when I went round the sales area, <laughs> there was one for sale. So this was in the sales area, which you wouldn't normally find this type of plant in that area. But I thought it's floriferous, has lots of flowers, because a plant that size with blooms on virtually every leaf is floriferous. So I got a Restrepia, and I got a Restrepia that is fundamentally red, which I haven't got. Nearly all of mine are stripy or spotty, um, with a gold or uh, hint to it. They're good sized blooms for Restrepias and um, I just liked the look of the fact that it was red and the very edges of the blooms are a deep red. It's got like two bars down the very sides. Deep red and that one is <coughs> 
Oh, this one's... <coughs> this one has probably come from Jersey, from the um, Eric Young Foundation, even though it's got a Burnham's label on it. Um, it's Restrepia Capria Hybrid in brackets. So, I'll have to look this up to find out what is actually in there, because it's going to be a mix. It might be a primary cross. I don't know. But I don't buy plants for their name. But having just said that, one of the ones I've still got to come, I did get for the name. A bit more than just that, but um, I can't say it. But anyway, so I got a new Restrepia. That's a nice one. Lovely deep red, that one, and a good sized bloom. It's not a bad plant. That leaves two. And these two came out of the private area. They had to be persuaded. We had to do quite a bit of persuading. We had to do quite a few going and looking and thinking and talking about it and fluttering our eyelids and everything to get these two out because that area is not for sale. Some bright-eyed people, when I was filming in that private area, I did make a point of specifically looking at a couple of tags as I was filming. Some people spotted that. Unfortunately, one of the tags I looked at, there was no way I was going to get out the door with that. It was the only one. It's incredibly rare. And I've got a substitute. So I haven't got the one that I looked at because it is their only one. It's precious. I got a substitute. I'll tell you why it's a substitute. This also came from the Eric Young Foundation. Um, I've got a feeling that Sarah had something to do with creating the seed and got the plants back six or seven years later. This is one of those. And this is You'll recognise the name, Miltoniopsis Roselii variety Xanthina. That's the yellow Miltoniopsis species variety. Incredibly rare. This isn't a purebred. It's that crossed back with Roselii. Yeah, so it's been crossed back with itself to get a bit of strength into it. The yellow Miltoniopsis, the Xanthia, is very weak. Um, it's a very frail plant, not a good grower. So it, it's one of those plants, if it gets going in the wild, in a place that it likes, it stays there and it grows well. But we don't tend to do that. We keep unpotting them and we keep changing their environment and they're incredibly sensitive. So they go down very easy. Um, they need to find a happy place and just be left there. But we can't because our medium goes off and things like that. So we end up having to disturb them. I still think I might mount that and then it can stay there forever. My environment's the same. I just have to go incredibly careful to make sure it doesn't dry out for anything but the shortest length of time. It is a Miltoniopsis. Yes, um, Sarah looked up the number on the back. That's in her register. Um, she's got an old-fashioned um, drawers that come out with boxes with bits of card sticking up with letters on, all alphabetic, and you f they're cards, written out cards. That's their index, and these, this was one of those. So, uh, so that is that. It is expected to be yellow blooming, despite being crossed back to the original, which has no yellow in it. The, um, the Roselia is not a yellow Miltoniopsis, it's only the variety Xanthina that is. But these, um, some of them have bloomed and um, some were bought out into the sales area at a certain point with blooms on and were sold. Um, and Sarah remembers, and Arthur's pretty sure as well, that they did bloom yellow. But being seedlings, they might not all bloom yellow. So I've got to wait and see. But um, I was allowed to sort of have a fuss round and pick and I picked one with um, got a little new growth here that's not a not an old growth that's quite new as is this one so it's actually got some new growths which are potential bloomers so we shall have to wait and see won't we 
but it's a nice little plant. These are miniatures as Miltoniopsis grow. This, this is their sort of size. They don't get much bigger than this. I'm going to be incredibly careful with that. Incredibly careful. So that's one that escaped out of the um, you're not supposed to be in here area. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that in a place over there. And then the last one also came out of that area and it's another one that I stopped and looked at rather carefully and had a look at the tag. And whether you could read the tag in the video I don't know. But um, I haven't been after this for any length of time. I had no thoughts of buying this but I thought you know given the amount of twinkles I've got I've got a lot of twinkles and I've got Soto Annum, one of the parents. Now I've got the other parent. I can't say this. <laughs> it's actually a named variety as well. Oh, of course, this is Sarah's. Yeah, I think this got on the board at some point. It's Oncidium Chiroforum, I think that's pronounced. And it's got E in quotes on the end of it, which sounds like it's been given a name. Let's see if I can get you there, that so that you can read the handwriting perhaps. So that is the other parent of the Twinkles. It's a miniature, which is what dwarfs down the Soto Annum. Um, it's yellow. Um, not all the Twinkles are yellow obviously. They've been played with over the years. And it's a nice little plant. It has no new growths on it, but it is flowering on the latest two growths. I was, I was told I could have one with a single spike. We had to do a bit more persuading to get one with two spikes. Because <laughs> they were, the two spiked ones had an extra bulb or two. There were some with quite a few more spikes than this, but they weren't prepared to let those go. Yeah, that's part of their uh, stock stuff. So, uh, so there we go. Those are they. Um, I was pleased with what I came, came away with, and as I said, the amount of money on the vouchers um, was a nice round figure with a little bit off, you know, off the end, and what we've got left is the little bit off the end, the round figure has gone. And you'll be pleased to hear that my breakfast and my coffee and all that went on the vouchers bill as well. So uh, apart from the fuel in the car, I went there and back on my vouchers and I'm well pleased. We've stocked up on goodies and we've got quite an assortment of plants quite honestly. That's a, uh, you know, that is a, so I'm just getting them back up so that we can see them all together. Ooh, that one's wet. So we've got our two intergenerics, one named and one possibly named, that could be a real name, I'll have to check. We've got our black hair type species dendrobium, infundibulum. I used to have an infundibulum crossed with lowii, but um, that decided it didn't like systemics and went down. It just literally dumped all its leaves, <laughs> so there's that. And then we've got that one. And that one. So, those are they. We've got our um, rare Miltoniopsis species, which should bloom yellow. Don't ask me when, I don't know. You know, this, this Miltoniopsis species thing is a whole new thing for me. But I do now have three. And bearing in mind you're lucky to get more than four. I think there is now only five in existence. There was once six, I believe, in the wild. This is going back like hundreds of years. One has long since been lost, I'm sure. And I think out of the five that there are, one of them is now extinct in the wild. So unless it's in cultivation, then that one's gone as well. So, um, yeah, I'm quite pleased. I've got the, uh, the little Phalaenopsis. <laughs> it's a weird one, isn't it? Miltoniopsis Phalaenopsis. And I've got the one over here, which is currently in bloom. That's also a species. That's one of the larger species. So we've got that one. Oh. And now we've got this little one too. So uh, along with the various hybrids I've got. So 
I do seem to be collecting quite a few of these. Bearing in mind they don't do that well for me, or they haven't in the past. Um, I think I may have cracked that now. Then we've got our Restrepria, which is uh, Cupria. It's a Cupria hybrid. Um, I might send Sarah an email and see if I can find out a bit more about that. But, you know, there's a, there, there is a bloom on virtually every leaf on there, and that's not a large plant. That's not a large plant. And then we've got our um, other uh, parent of the um, twinkles. This goes back to our last show, back in February. I had something. What did I have? May well have been a twinkle, I'm not sure, but I had a mounted orchid in the show on Oncidium type, so it may well have been a twinkle. And Lynn Smith had this one. In the, they're in the same category, Oncidium, um, yeah? And um, she was wondering whether, because mine had more spikes than hers, mine might be marked higher than hers. Um, the other thing I remember about Lynn's is it was entered into several shows quite a long way apart. These blooms last ages. Now that's something that the twinkles don't do. So anyway, that's that one. Very fragrant, obviously. And then we've got our uh, two intergenerics, our bobcat, wildcat bobcat, and our other one. So six plants, three bags of charcoal, three large pieces of cork bark, and a bag of bark and a bug spray ready to use for spot treatments as and when I see the odd little outbreak here and there where it just doesn't warrant mixing up a litre to squirt one plant with. So that was the idea of that. So a great day out. That's the haul. Now I've got to find somewhere to put them because this one, <laughs> that is a monster of a pseudo bowl, the size of that. <laughs> It's an absolute monster. And this effect effectively has got four bulbs. It's got one buried, uh, leafless, and then three progressively getting larger pseudo bulbs. Um, again, it's in that peat stuff, but um, the roots don't look too far gone. It's also very, very heavy duty cane that has branched quite nicely. And in amongst this cluster are some buds that are not fully open yet, so we've still got some to open. Um, the other one, the red one, as I said, this is not quite such a good plant, only two bulbs. Um, but it does look like it's got a good root system, and this one has no buds to open, so these blooms might not last that long. I must remember to get my camera out here and get a picture before they drop off. Um, so there we go, that is it. That was a hard day, um, miserable weather, so I had a, not a very nice drive there. The countryside and scenery on that journey in places is absolutely stunning. Yeah, not if you're actually driving in low cloud, it's not, which is the equivalent of like being in fog. But yeah, some of the higher bits of ground, I was in the clouds, actually driving in the clouds, so everybody slowed down, headlamps ablaze and everything. You couldn't see a thing, you could only just about see the edges of the road, it was so thick. So that was the journey there. Um, it didn't take a ridiculous amount of time, I was happy with the time. I got there at a minute to ten. How about that for judgement on a 105 mile journey? <laughs> it opens at ten, I got there at a minute to ten. So that was good. My journey home was rubbish, and I mean rubbish really heavy traffic, um, you come off the A38 onto the M5, big sort of tailback, stop go, stop go, um, the exit from the M5, solid traffic, sets of traffic lights to get back on a road where I finally got going a bit, um, then you get a dual carriageway all the way to Honiton, come off the, Hon the Honiton onto the A35 that comes back to Bournemouth and I don't think I got over 20 miles an hour right through to Bridport, which is a long way on an A road. There's nowhere to, there's no passing places, no dual carriageways, it's just an old, old twisty road. And what the hold up was, I don't know. I think it was just heavy traffic, but I don't know why. 
I had, I, I, you know, I mean, I had my Zoom meeting at seven o'clock that evening, and I got in the door at half past six. I was expecting to be home about quarter past half past five and have a meal and settle down for the Zoom meeting. I came in the door at half past six, you know, almost straight into the meeting. So uh, that journey took a long time. I think that journey home took about three and a half hours, ridiculous amount of time for the, for the miles, you know. Um, but I didn't really get going till I got to this side of Dorchester, really, which is like almost home. So very bad journey home. Uh, no real reason why, just volume of traffic. It's not like it's holiday season. Uh, I just couldn't work it out. But there was a real heavy amount of traffic on the road. So that's all it was. And um, anyway, that's that journey done now. I probably won't go to Burnham's now again till next year. Probably take a spring trip um, at some point. But um, bearing in mind our, um, our version of Blondie in charge is uh, instigating the lockdown in the middle of this coming week. So we're going back into lockdown again. Stay at home, only essential travel, not leisure travel, all that sort of stuff is back again. Um, Strangely enough, they're leaving the schools, colleges and universities open. <laughs> Not so sure. <laughs> anyway, they've made the decision, so um, doesn't make, that doesn't make a huge difference to me. Um, I don't go out much, and I can still go around the shop to get my local food. Um, so there's nothing really changes much for me, apart from the fact... I can't really just jump in the car and go somewhere to have a walk in the forest or something like that. I'm not supposed to be doing that, no. But this time of year I wouldn't be anyway. You know, weather's lousy. So uh. Anyway, I've got watering to do out here today. It should have been done yesterday. It didn't get done yesterday. Some of it should have been done Friday and it definitely didn't get done Friday. So uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. That's a set of three, really. You know, you've got your... Uh, Looking around the growing areas, you've got your sales areas and now the hall, um, the stuff I came home with. Um, courtesy of my birthday vouchers and again thank you for all those who contributed and made that possible. Because it, it wasn't just the contribution, there was organising to do. Sarah was involved at Burnham's, you know, so it, it, it had to come together to make that work. So big thanks for all of that. It's, um, it's nice to be appreciated actually. <laughs> so thanks a bunch and see you next time bye for now